namo bhagavate vasudevaya Text 3 is on the board, so we'll read text 2. Yasye dam shiti mandalam bhagavatun ta murte sahasrasi rasa ekasmin evasi rasani diramanam siddhartha eva lakshate. Translation Sukadeva Goswami continued. This great universe, situated on one of Lord Ananta's thousands of hoods, appears just like a white mustard seed. It is infinitesimal compared to the hood of Lord Ananta. The translation, please repeat. Sukadeva Goswami continued. This great universe, situated on one of Lord Ananta's thousands of hoods, appears just like a white mustard seed. It is infinitesimal compared to the hood of Lord Ananta. The text three. Yasya ha ba idam Kaleno pasanji shirshato Amarsha Virachita Ruchira Brahman Bruvor Antarena Sankarsano Nama Rudra Ekadasa Vyuhas Traksyas Trisikam Shulam Utambayam Udatistat So there's no meter to this, so we'll just chant the word for word. Yasya of whom? Haba indeed, idam, this material world, kalena, in due course of time, upasanjahir shataha, desiring to destroy, amarsha, by anger, virachita, form. Ruchira, very beautiful. Brahmat, moving. Bruvo, the two eyebrows. Antarena, from between. Sankarsana Nama, name Sankarshan. Rudraha, in an incarnation of Lord Shiva. Ekadasha Vyuha, who has eleven expansions. Triaksha, three eyes. Trishikam, having three points. Shulam, a trident. Utambayam, raising. Udatistat, arose. Translation, at the time of the, uh, the time of devastation when Lord Anantadev desires to destroy the entire creation, 
he becomes slightly angry. Then from between his two eyebrows appears three-eyed Rudra carrying a trident. This Rudra, who is known as Sankarshan, is the embodiment of the 11 Rudras, or incarnations of Lord Shiva. He appears in order to devastate the entire creation. Translation, please repeat. At the time of devastation, when Lord Anantadev desires to destroy the entire creation, he becomes slightly angry. Then from between his two eyebrows appears three-eyed Rudra, carrying a trident. This Rudra, who is known as Sankarshan, is the embodiment of the 11 Rudras, or incarnations of Lord Shiva. He appears in order to devastate the entire creation. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. In each creation, the living entities are given a chance to close their business as conditioned souls. When they misuse this opportunity and do not go back to home, back to Godhead, Lord Sankarshan becomes angry. The 11 Rudras, expansions of Lord Chima, come out from Lord Sankarshan's eyebrows due to his angry mood, and all of them together devastate the entire creation. Read the translations again. Sukadev so continued, this great universe situated in one of Lord Anantadev's thousands of woods appears just like a white mustard seed. It is infinitesimal compared to the hood of Lord Ananta. The time of devastation when Lord Anantadev desires to destroy the entire creation, he becomes slightly angry. Then from between his two eyebrows appears three-eyed Rudra carrying a trident. This Rudra, who is known as Sankarshan, is the embodiment of 11 Rudras, or incarnations of Lord Shiva. He appears in order to devastate the entire creation. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Taksurun Militanjena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Manu Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sayam Rupakadamayam Swapanandigam, Adadanas Trinandan Dai Ridam Yache Puna Puna, Srimad Rupa Padam Bujo Tulisyam Janmadan Muni, Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada Shiva Sri Gaura Bhaktavrinda, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare. Pancha kalpa trubhyasca kripa sinnu veva cha vajitanam bhavane vyo vaishnave vyo namo namaha These two verses don't give much to talk about in the Prabhupada's purport, but anyway, we'll try to speak something for the pleasure of the Vaishnavas. So here it describes that this universe is just like a tiny white mustard seed on the hood of Lord Anantadev. So we're very puffed up thinking that we're something. Hmm? But we're just one tiny person sitting in this room full of persons in this one temple in a town of 20,000 temples. Hmm? Hmm. A town of hundreds of thousands of towns in the state of UP, just one of the states of India. 
where there happens to be more than a billion people. There's one country on the Asian continent, on a planet where there's so many continents, in one tiny planet in this universe where there's filled with so many universes and stars and sun and moon and everything. And there's unlimited amounts of universes. So we don't have much to be very puffed up about, but somehow we're puffed up. Actually, we're most insignificant. Just like one time one devotee came to Prabhupada, oh Prabhupada, I'm the most fallen. Prabhupada, you're not the most fallen, you're simply insignificant. <laughs> you want to be proud of me, I'm the most fallen. <laughs> and Prabhupada smashed his falls, you're sin simply insignificant, not the most fallen, simply insignificant. So we can't imagine the universe is just like a tiny mustard seed on the hood of Lord Anantadev. So we can't imagine what is our tiny position. Hmm? And yet we're busy all day fighting with every other living entity for the resources of material nature. Hmm? And we spend the whole lifetime struggling and struggling. At the end they take us to the bank of the Jamuna and burn our body and everything is turned to ashes. After all struggle and struggle. So our position is most insignificant. So he goes on to say that at the time of devastation, Lord Anantadev becomes slightly angry. Now his anger is going to destroy the entire cosmic creation. And this is just slightly angry. We don't want to know what fully angry must be like. <laughs> oh, just slightly angry. Purport the, the rather the verse is slightly angry, hmm? and from his eyebrows comes one three-eyed Rudra. We always see in the movies that when Rudra's third eye opens up, there's nothing but trouble. Hmm? So this means the end of the universe, and we'll see from Anantadev's mouths come. Enormous fire and the whole universe is destroyed by fire. So it's interesting, almost every culture of the world, they have some l legend, let's say, or in their scriptures, better to say. It talks about destruction by water and destruction by fire. Almost every culture in the world. Very interesting. Because we also have, when Lord Matsya appeared, the whole universe was destroyed by water. In other cultures, they also have the same thing. And here it's telling that at the, this particular end of this universe, Lord Anantadev will destroy the universe by fire. And other cultures also have this destruction by fire. In fact, it's quite interesting. When I was a young devotee, he didn't know anything. But still those days we had complete faith. We didn't know anything. I hardly I hadn't even been a devotee for a year even. And I joined in a place called Boulder, Colorado, the first devotee to join. They didn't even have a temple when they joined. Later, shortly after I got initiated, they sent me to LA to join up with a very nice devotee named Mohanananda and his very wonderful wife, Shasti Dasi. And they gave us a little VW bug, if anybody remembers those things. Now you know how old we are. Uh, you probably don't even remember Volkswagen bugs. You have to go to South America. They're, somehow they all migrated to South America. 
Especially Bolivia. Everywhere you see Volkswagen bugs. And they gave us a bunch of boxes of Back to Godhead magazine. Jai, C.C. Gornitai, Krishna Balaram, C.C. Radha Sham Sundar. C.C. Gornitai. They gave us a few boxes of Back to Godheads and a couple of boxes of Spiritual Sky Incense. And they sent us into the rising sun and said, go start a temple in Dallas, Texas. Now there was temples on the East Coast, there was temples on the West Coast. Dallas is right practically in the middle of the country. We hardly been a devotee, we hardly knew three or four slokas of Bhagavad Gita. But just our faith and devotion for Prabhupada was such we were ready to go out charging Mahananda. He'd probably been a devotee for one more year than me. He was a two-year-old devotee. His wife was probably a year and a half. I was only not even one year. But to please Prabhupada, we went out in the middle of the wilderness to Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas is also famous for cowboys but not the ones we're used to they don't protect cows what they do we don't want to speak in the front of our Lord all we can say is go mataki that was very interesting when you take risks like this so many things Krishna provides so many interesting adventures and experiences So we just before we arrived in Dallas, it was late, so we stopped at some wayside inn and checked in for the night. The next morning we'll drive into Dallas. And the wife of the owner of the inn, she was very curious because she saw her funny robes and everything and funny haircut. Completely bald with a little tail coming out the back. So she came to our room and she wanted to know if this had something to do with Brahmanism. Because she had read something in some books about India and she wanted to know if it had something to do with Brahmanism. This is out in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and some ladies asking us about Brahmins. And she suggested to us, and we told her we're going to start a temple, she said there's a group of people that are very open-minded called the First Unitarian Church. They, they're very open-minded people, they're not fanatics. They will surely help you. So we drove into this place famous for these Ugra Karma Kaur boys. We no contact, no nothing, just they said to go to the First Unitarian Church, so we went there. And they were very pleased that some representative of Bedi culture had come to Dallas to start a center there, because they were very open-minded people. So they were basically Christian, but they were very open-minded. So he said, we have no place to stay. So they looked in their directory, and there was one law lawyer who lived in the north end of Dallas. And anybody who knows anything about Dallas, the other thing it's famous for is oil. And all the Texas, those, time, that, th those days they were millionaires, now they're probably all billionaires. But all the Texas oil millionaires lived in the north end of Dallas. And generally this wasn't the type of area we went to. In the old days, when we opened the temple, it was usually in a very low rent district all broken down houses around us, strange people living. We just took an old broken down house, painted it funny colors and put a sign, Radha Krishna Temple, and became a temple. So now here we are in the north of Dallas, in this very wealthy, he was probably the lawyer for all the Texas oil millionaires. But they were part of the First Unitarian Church, so they're very open-minded. So first night we were there, we, op we put a little 
we set up a little altar on his coffee table. And we did it, we did Gorartik and we did Kirtan and we spoke something about Bhagavad Gita. So anyway, he went on to like that for two, three days having Kirtan in his living room. Sometimes he invites some friends, open-minded friends. I mean, these are the type of people if we were probably this, from this section of town, if they saw us on the street, you know, we were, only worst place to distribute books I found was Houston, because later we went to Houston. And I don't ever remember distributing a book to anybody I, or even a magazine, to anybody I approached. Always somebody would come up from behind and tap us on the shoulder, hey, what you got there? Everybody just ignored us or gave us evil looks. So it was probably some pers this type of end of town where the people probably wouldn't even look out of the corner of our eye at us. We were in their houses and doing kirtan and distributing prasadam. But to get to the point, one day, was those times we were just, you know, we didn't have, like nowadays every single, whatever you do they, is, is captured on a cell phone or a digital camera and it's on Facebook and it's all over the world. You can't do anything without it showing up on Facebook. But those days we didn't have cameras, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have all these things. We were just, you know, our whole life was doing kirtan on the streets and that was it. So I never thought about what happened was she showed us a book that she had and I never, because we were just into kirtan and that was all and nothing else mattered. And she showed us this book and now I'm lamenting, I wish I knew where that book was or the name of the book or something about that book. But she opened up this book one day for me and it showed, little, there was a Indian painting there and it said 17th century Hindu painting of the Lord incarnated as a tortoise and the devas on one side and the demons on the other side with a big snake called Vasuki turning this mountain resting on the back of the turtle, turning the ocean into nectar, turning the ocean of milk. Okay, we all know that. But then she flipped the page. There was the same theme in Egyptian hieroglyphics. God incarnated as a turtle, a big mountain whose name began with M, a snake, the theist on one side, the atheist on one side, turning the ocean. Such and such century Egyptian hieroglyphics describing the same situation. Then she flipped the page. It was such and such, it was either Mayan or Incan, I can't remember, one of them from South America. Same theme, a painting was there, such and such century painting of the Lord incarnated, God incarnated as a tor tortoise, a mountain on his back with, began with M, a uh, snake wrapped around the mountain, the atheist on one side, the theist on the other side, turning the ocean. Now we were just fanatic Hare Krishnas. I didn't think to ever, this was, book was just Maya, but, so I never thought to get the name of the book or anything about this book. Now I'm lamenting it. It was a very interesting book. But it just shows how Bedi culture was there once all over the whole world. So here we're getting, we're going to hear the description how the universe is destroyed by fire. Lord Rudras begin to do his Tandava, his dance. In fact, 11 Rudras, not just one, it says 11 Rudras going to dance and destroy the entire universe. So Prabhupada says, in each creation, the living entities are given a chance to close their business as conditioned souls. This whole universe is created as a chance because we're conditioned souls. It's like nowadays in every office there's air conditioner. We call it air conditioner because in this weather, 
the natural condition of the air is very hot. So then we have this machine that conditions the air to become cool. Its natural position is hot, but we condition it to become cool. Hmm? This season, naturally, the air is hot. We're all sweating here like anything. Waiting, when's Dina Banu going to shut up and we can go back to our fan or our air conditioner? Hmm? So, but we condition the air to become cool. Therefore, Prabhupada used this name, conditioned soul. Our natural condition is to serve Krishna. That's our natural state. But now we're being put through this machinery of the material energy. Now our natural, we've been conditioned to seek sense gratification. Therefore, we're conditioned so naturally, without even thinking, we don't even have to think about uh, seeking out sense gratification. Immediately, you know, we see, some, we walk by Goranga's bakery. Whoa, our eyes just pop out looking at all that wonderful colored things there. Some pretty girl walks by, don't even have to think about it. Immediately the eyes go in that direction. We're conditioned. Our natural condition is to serve the Lord. But now we're conditioned, we're conditioned souls, we're conditioned to seek out sense gratification. So this world, we're given to try to seek out sense gratification, but the other business of this world is to recondition us back to our original position of servants of Krishna. We are just talking about the incarnations, of, we were just talking about Lord Tortoise, we were talking about Lord Rudra. Mm -hmm. so the Lord is constantly, He's so kind upon the conditioned souls, He sends innumerable, says if you look in the ocean, you will see so many waves. Anybody can count those waves? Nobody can count. But said the the incarnations of the Lord, the avatars, we don't, we don't like this word incarnation. Karna means meat. If you know Spanish or Latin languages. So it has the connotation of the Lord becoming a meat body. So we use the word avatar. Avatar means one who descends from above. Avatar. We don't like this word incarnation. Avatar. So the avatars of the Lord are more numerable than the waves in the ocean and nobody can even count the waves in the ocean. This means Lord is anxious to get the, the conditioned souls out of this material world. Sometimes even Bhagavan Bhajan and then Sham Sundar himself appears. So like we know there's so many expansions and incarnations of the Lord but Srimad Bhagavatam specifically says, Ete Chansa Kala Punsan, Krishna's tu Bhagavan Sayam. So many ants and chams and so many things are there, but expansions, avatars, but Krishna's tu Bhagavan Sayam. And we're so fortunate when we read Vedic scriptures, actually, Vedic scriptures are very interesting. It's practically only in Vedic, there's so many scriptures in the world, but Hardly we find any scriptures that talk about epics of millions and billions of years. The Puranas go back, that's why they're called Purana. Purana means old, ancient. They go back to talk about epics of, that, that last billions of years. Lord Brahma's life, we can, we, his day is 4,320,000,000 uh, 4, years. And that night is also in so many years, a hundred years, and like that. Huge epics of time we talk about. No other scriptures ever talk. They talk about a thousand years that Moses lived for his, Abraham, Abraham, whatever it was, Moses didn't live so long, but Abraham or somebody, he lived for 990 years and so on, lived for something. But we're talking about millions of years. I forgot what my point was. <laughs> what were you talking about before? Senior moment. Avatars. So the Lord, He's sending all His avatars to, since the beginning of time, 
to try to convince us to leave this material world. One time, in connection with this sentence of Srila Prabhupada, in the old, old, old days back in 26th Second Avenue when Allen Ginsberg was coming around, the Prabhupada mentioned how this end of Kali Yuga, then Lord Kalki will appear and he will, no more preaching. People won't have any intelligence to hear anything about preaching and they're not interested in preaching. Just he'll take his sword and finish everybody off. And he just gave so many descriptions of people, if you get to be 20 years old, then you're a grand old man. Okay. 20 years old would be grand old man. So Allen Ginsberg asked Prabhupada, is this some, because sometimes, especially in America, there's all these people that carry big signs around, the end of the world is nigh. Hmm? And every year we're hearing somebody's predict, some, some group comes along and they predict that on the 22nd day of the third month, the 24th hour, the whole world is going to come to an end and so many people believe him and they give up all their belongings. And every year we hear about somebody predicting. It never happens. So, these people are there. Again, the dis noise distracted me. train of thought just left without me, <laughs> left the station without me. So anyway, all these avatars are there to, oh, Allen Ginsberg. So he said, Allen Ginsberg asked, is this an event that you expect your disciples to see in their lifetime? That was the point. Because all these people are always saying the end of the world is coming. They're probably, no, this is not. This is another 427,000 years. Kali Yuga is 432,000 years long. 5,000 already gone, so five, 527,000 years from now. This will happen, not an event that they'll see in their lifetime. Then Prabhupada said, by that time, all my disciples will be back to home, back to Godhead with me. But those who do not follow them, they will see the fun. Those who do not follow them, they will see the fun. So the, exactly the sense. In each creation, we living giving a chance to close their business as conditioned souls. This, ma this material universe is actually a chance. Although it's giving us a chance for sense, God, it's a chance to rectify ourselves. It's like generally the prison house. They call it reformatory. So actually all that happens is they go to the prison, they learn from all the other prisoners that the tricks of the trade, how to steal and rob and do everything, become more expert and come out and again more expert in not, how not to get caught. Hmm. But actually the purpose of the prison is to reform the, the prisoner. Reform the criminal. He's criminal, now it's to reform. It's the purpose of the mature world is not to keep us condition, uncondition us. And if we don't take advantage, Prabhupada said, then we will have to see Lord Anantadev and the 11 Rudras doing their dance. We'll get to see that. Hmm. So we want to take advantage. We have to cross over this ocean of Kali Yuga. Hmm. So for that, we need a boat. Hmm. The boat is the holy name. Prabhupada has given us this boat of the holy name. And boat always requires a captain. So we have Srila Prabhupada as our captain of our boat. In old days, boats, they required breeze. Boats all required breeze. Just like we saw in the 
Life of Pi, at one point there's no breeze, this boat went nowhere. <laughs> so it requires some breeze. Breezes are the scriptures, the scriptures are the breezes. So in this huge ocean of Kali Yuga, we're lost completely, but we have a nice boat that's chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. We have the wonder, most wonderful captain for our boat, Srila Prabhupada. And we have the most wonderful scriptures all filled. We, when we go on pictures, usually we just used to open up to the pictures and everybody say, wow, far out, look at this. Hey, Joe, come here. This Hare Krishna is here with these far out books, you know. In the most wonderful scriptures, we have favorable breeze, we have most wonderful captain, we have most wonderful boat, so we should take advantage of all of this and finish up our conditioned life in this material world. We don't want to stay around to see the 11 Rujas do their dance. Although it may be very interesting, we don't want to stay around to see it. We want to take advantage of uh, this movement that Srila Prabhupada has created in this dark Kali Juga, the movement of Sriman Mahaprabhu, so we want to take advantage and not wait around to see the dance of Lord Rudradev. Hare Krishna. Does anybody has any questions? And don't think, because we're talking about millions of years. Oh, we have millions of years before the end of the universe. Uh, we'll take it easy. Because we don't know. Because hmm? it said this material world is perverted, perverted reflection of spiritual world. So re reflection means that there's something real also. So we see, now we know Lord Mahavishnu is lying down, he's breathing out, sleeping. And as long as he breathes out for billions and billions of years, this universe is manifest. So we think, I have billions of years to worry about getting back to God. Mm -hmm. But we have seen sometimes it's material, sometimes someone's sleeping. So maybe, because this is reflection, maybe sometimes Lord Vishnu also does like that. So we don't know. Maybe we may not have billions of years. Maybe next week Lord Vishnu is going to like that and the whole universe will be finished. So we have to try to become serious. Take every, every moment that we have is sacred. That was for the Hindi class. We don't have time. <laughs> so if there's no more questions, we can fall down at the very soft and wonderful lotus feet of the great personality who's become the captain of our boat to take us out of this Kali Yuga. See the Prabhupada Ki. Yeah.